So up to this point, we have talked about first order systems, second order systems. Now it comes the turn for third order systems and higher order systems. We cannot talk about all those systems. However, we shall learn some strategy. So if we have, for example, third order system, how we can obtain its response? If we have third order system, for example, or a higher order system, then its response, uh, for example, we have this system, third order system, some numerator polynomial and something in the denominator. And so if we have third order system, that is degree of denominator polynomial is third. <laughs> So, in order to obtain its uh, response, we multiply it by the Laplace transform of unit step. And then to convert it into time domain, what we do is we take inverse Laplace transform. For inverse Laplace transform, we make partial fraction expansion. If we have third order polynomial, one root will be necessarily a real root, right? And two poles can be either real or complex. So if you obtain partial fraction expansion, it will have this form, A is some constant, and then you have uh, the second order. We have uh, performed partial fraction expansion for complex poles. We have written them together, two poles written together, one pole, third pole here. What is the time domain? Time domain response. Its inverse <laughs> a plus uh, it's uh, it has something similar to e raised to the power minus zeta omega n d and cosine of something. The one which we have derived for second order system. What is this thing? Is inverse Laplace transform? plus b e raised to the power minus alpha r into p. Right? Clear? So the response, overall response, will be composed of these three terms. What is shape of this? Uh, if you plot it, what shape we get? Decaying, Decaying exponential if alpha is greater than zero. If this third term is decaying very faster, then response, overall response, will be mainly determined by these two poles. That is, in the S plane, if I have poles, two poles over here, and third pole, which is real pole, somewhere over here, then this term, the term due to this pole will decay down very quickly. Why? So, larger is the magnitude, faster will be the decay. This will decay down very quickly. And the overall response will be mainly determined by these two poles. Right? If the case, if it is the case that this is uh, its, its magnitude is very large compared to the real part of these poles, then response will be mainly determined by these two poles. And then, that is, this third order system is approximately the same as this second order system. And for this third order system, even we can use the same relations which we have derived for second order system. However, these expressions will be approximately applicable. Clear? This is the situation when this third pole is very far away in the left half S plane. In that case, we call it less dominant pole. Less dominant. And these poles, these two poles are called dominant poles. The response will be mainly determined by dominant poles. And we can approximately use these relations. 
and this uh, this uh, discussion is applicable for even higher order systems for example if we have two poles at this location one pole at this location and fourth pole let's say at this location so these two poles are less dominant response will be mainly determined by these two poles dominant poles and we can use this relation clear the rule of thumb is that if the real part of this pole is five times more than the real part of these poles then it is called it is it, it will be less dominant for example if the real part is minus 2 and this is real part is minus 10 then this pole is less dominant this is rule of thumb and no hard and fast uh, thing for example if it is even at for example 9.5 still we can say that it is less dominant however closer is this pole to these poles less applicable will be these formulas clear so for example we have uh, three unfortunately MATLAB is not installed on this PC so anyway we can just uh, sketch uh, these uh, plots uh, this is uh, a transfer function you can obtain its step response very easily using MATLAB uh, you remember how to enter this transfer function into MATLAB the strategy is simple T1 for another transfer function T2 of S uh, which is given by here you have a transfer function which is third order system again use MATLAB command to obtain its step response you will observe that the response of this system closely matches with the response of this system because the third pole is less dominant you can also sketch the pole zero map of uh, this uh, uh, transfer function to see the location of poles and uh, this response is uh, somehow like this one these sketches these plots are obtained from MATLAB and the two transfer functions have almost similar uh, transient characteristics uh, compared to that if you have another transfer function and you can also sketch its plot you have this third transfer function and here the third goal is not less dominant so it will significantly distort the transient response of that particular system and uh, this plot sketched with MATLAB looks like uh, this one significantly different from the uh, response of two poles so what is conclusion uh, conclusion of discussion up to this point yes sir both so enthusiastically so you know some of the lecture is over so to the ki discussion ka conclusion so we have learned how to describe the transient specifications by looking at location of the poles for first order system for second order system for higher order system uh, we can use the same formulas provided that other poles are less dominant any question up to this point Thank <clears throat> you.